In Soldiers National Cemetery, in the evenings of the summer, they have a ceremony called the 100 Nights of Taps. It's performed each night at 7 p.m. On June 29, 2022, we attended this ceremony. What follows is their program. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to 100 Nights Gettysburg, 100 Nights of Taps, 2022 on this evening of June 29, 2022. My name is John Tuscan. I'm the historian archivist with the Lincoln Fellowship of Pennsylvania. 100 Nights of Taps Gettysburg 2022 is sponsored by the Lincoln Fellowship of Pennsylvania and the Gettysburg National Military Park in partnership with Taps for Veterans and the Gettysburg Licensed Battlefield Guides. I'm honored to introduce Damon Morris from Paltmont, Pennsylvania, tonight's bugler. This is his sixth year here uh, selling taps with 100 Nights of Taps Gettysburg. Thank you for coming out this evening. Thank you. I'll tell you more about Damon in just a minute. Also, I want to introduce our ranger here tonight representing Gettysburg National uh, Military Park, Carlton Smith. Thank you, Carlton, for coming out this evening. Also, I, I did want to point out, Damon has some folks with him this evening. His family's here. His wife, Jennifer. Where is everyone? Jennifer. His daughter, Emily. Her best friend, Alexa. Hi, Alexa. Uh, his uh, very good friend and co-worker, uh, Sergeant and Major U.S. Army retired, Chris Bellman. Chris. And friends, Hannah and Andrew, and their son, Lucas. Thanks for coming out to teach. This evening, we walked through this beautiful national cemetery, guided by pathways that brought us here to Soldiers National Monument behind me. While walking along the pathways, we were surrounded by the graves of fallen heroes and their enduring stories of sacrifice, sorrow, as well as extraordinary bravery. And those same pathways converge here to the place where, in 1863, President Abraham Lincoln delivered the Gettysburg Address, one of the greatest speeches of all time. Gettysburg's national pathways are America's enduring pathways that guide us to our history. And tonight, our enduring pathway has to do with eyewitnesses to seeing Lincoln here coming to the uh, cemetery for the de uh, dedication. Imagine what it had been like to see President Abraham Lincoln when he was here in Gettysburg. It was a Wednesday morning, November 18th, when Lincoln arrived by a patriotically decorated train at the Carlisle Street Depot. Many cheering spectators greeted the president as he disembarked from the train and made his way, way to the home of the David Wills house. Later that evening, crowds out on the street wanted to hear from the president. They cheered for the president to come out and make a speech. Lincoln responded with a wave from the window. And the crowd continued to cheer for a speech. Lincoln finally appeared out of the York Street steps of the Wills House. 13-year-old William T. Timpton, an apprentice at the Tyson Brothers Photographic Gallery, was among the spectators. Timpton admired Lincoln greatly. He wrote, Quote, my eagerness to see and hear the president whom I regarded as much above all other men, second only to the Almighty, centered all my attention on Mr. Lincoln and no word or movement of his escaped my attention. I had heard that Mr. Lincoln was the homeliest man in the country, but when my eyes beheld that sad but kindly countenance, those strug, strong, rugged features, he seemed handsome to me. The next day, November 19th, the streets of Gettysburg swelled with visitors. It had been estimated that 10, 000, tens of thousands of people were there. Lincoln stepped out of the Wheels House around 10 a.m. to join in the procession on horseback. Eight-year-old W.C. Storwick, who lived three miles outside of Gettysburg, observed the following. He said, quote, I saw Mr. Lincoln as he was about to start down the steps of the sidewalk. I was surprised and I might say awed by his great height, his black hair and beard, his dark complexion, his head covered with a tall silk hat. I thought he was the tallest man I'd ever seen. 
and I fancy I could still see him as he appeared to me on that day. Lincoln remained on his impatient horse for an hour before the procession started down Baltimore Street at 11 a.m. They traveled south, coming this way, turned right on the Emmitsburg Road, which is Steinweir Avenue, and proceeded to the cemetery at the junction with Pawnee Town Road, right over here. Every minute along the way, a cannon had fired. Edward Everett, the principal speaker, began his speech at noon. It lasted nearly two hours. A hymn followed Everett's speech, and then President Lincoln was introduced to make his few appropriate remarks. When Lincoln stood to speak, the large crowd cheered loudly. Charles Young remembered Lincoln's solemn appearance as he faced the audience. But Philip Hilker, Hilker recalled, quote, with a hand on each side of his manuscript, he spoke in a most deliberate manner and with such a forceful and articulate expression that he could be heard by all of that immense throng. There was no gesture except with both hands up and down, grasping the manuscript, which he did not seem to need, need as he looked so solid. And I'd like to close with this final story about eyewitnesses to Lincoln. Another youngster, five-year-old George Thorne, had his own memorable encounter with Lincoln. He recalled that a long passageway had opened in the crowd to allow the president and other dignitaries to leave the cemetery. He wrote, quote, we were on the side of the aisle. On the other side was a drum major covered with gold trimming. My brother jumped, jumped across to be near that individual and I was in the act of joining him when I felt a hand on top of my head turning me back to my mother, who was very much chagrined that I should have walked in the way of the president. I have never regretted my act for that day, for it gave me the right to say I was patted on the head by Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> Once again, I'm very honored to welcome Damon Morris, tonight's bugler. Damon began sounding taps for the Kratz, Pennsylvania VFW Diamond Jubilee Post in 1984 and remained post bugler until the early 2000s. As a member of the Valley Forge Military Academy Regimental Band and Herald Trumpets, he served as regimental bugler, sounding all regimental bugle calls associated with cadet life, including the sounding of taps during chapel services. His professional music career includes the um, the, 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 the Frolic Wanderer, Wanderer German Band. The, thank you. Pine Grove Community Band, principal positions with the Pottsville Third Brigade Band, Lebanon Community Concert Band, Charter Principal Trumpet Central Pennsylvania Symphony Orchestra, and Associate Principal Trumpet Hershey Symphony Orchestra. Very accomplished musician. In 1991, Damon enlisted in the Pennsylvania Air National Guard 553rd Air Force Band of the Mid Atlantic, where he served till 1997. Upon graduation of basic military training school, Lackland Air Force Base, San Antonio, Texas, he was assigned United States Air Force Band Ceremonial Brass, Bowling Air Force Base, Washington, D.C. for initial active duty. He currently, but is soon to be retired, corrections officer uh, with the State Correctional Institute, Cole Township, Pennsylvania Department of Corrections. He began his career in 1999 and still serves as the bugler for the institution's honor guard. He currently resides in Caltmont, Pennsylvania with wife Jennifer and daughter Emily, who we introduced earlier. Tonight, he's sounding taps on a Kepper, Kiefer, Kiefer, Kiefer cornet manufactured in Williamsport, Pennsylvania during World War I, 1915. Tonight, he is sounding taps in remembrance of all past veterans, law enforcement officers, and Major General Samuel Koskowski Koskowski Zook, Major Zook, a distant relative, was <coughs> wounded during the Battle of Gettysburg July 2nd, 1863, and died July 3rd, 1863. Thank you again, Dave. Thank you. We meet here in Gettysburg National Cemetery, so we shall never forget our brave American veterans. 
we remain steadfast in our dedication to the great unfinished work which those who fought here, as well as the many foreign lands so nobly advanced. And we honor that they gave the last full measure of devotion so that this nation, under God, shall have a new birth of freedom and the government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. tradition began two years ago. We are honoring one soldier here every evening for the entire season of 100 Nights of South Gettysburg. And as we honor this one soldier, he comes to represent all the soldiers buried here in Soldiers National Cemetery. And the, uh, we placed his image on this commemorative coin, which we award to our bugler and other participants in 100 Nights of South Gettysburg. And the soldier we're honoring this year is Sergeant Amos Thomaston the 154th New York Volunteer Infantry. Amos Humiston was born in Owega, New York in 1830. At Gettysburg, he fought with Colonel Charles Foster's Brigade, 1st Brigade, 2nd Division, 11th Corps, Army of the Potomac. He died in the streets of Gettysburg on July 1st, 1863, while covering for retreating Union troops coming through town headed south this direction. Near the, uh, end of the first day of the battle. Sergeant Humiston's dead body was found clutching a Nadler type portrait, which is a glass on print. And it was a portrait of his three children. He, uh, he was buried as an unknown soldier from New York. More than three months after the Battle of Gettysburg, Sergeant Humiston's wife, Belinda, learned that Amos had died. She recognized her children's portrait printed by a newspaper in New York that was trying to identify this unknown soldier from New York. The, child, the soldier was Amos, and the children of the battlefield were Frank, Frederick, and Ellis Humiston. Gettysburg citizens memorialized his death with a large stone marker that is immediately south of the railroad tracks across the square uh, in town across Stratton Street, not far from the Coster Avenue Monument to 154th New York. Uh, infantry. If you go down to the fire station, fire department in Gettysburg and pull in the parking lot, you'll see the uh, memorial there with the images of the three children. And if you would like to visit Sergeant Humiston's grave site this evening after the program to pay your respects, he's in the New York section and we marked his grave with a small flag this evening. I'd like to award this point to you. Thank you. And I'd like to also invite up uh, Major Bellman, sir, and uh, I'd like to award the coin to you, too. Thank you, sir. And thanks again, sir. <laughs> Reminder, we have taps here every evening are sounded at 7 p.m. Please also please join us, if you can, on November 19th for the annual Dedication Day ceremony, which is sponsored by well, co-sponsored by the Lincoln Fellowship of Pennsylvania in commemoration of Lincoln's Gettysburg Address. The uh, keynote speaker this year is Dr. Ellen uh, Galzo, who's a uh, noted 
a Lincoln historian and Civil War uh, historian and scholar. So please join us then if you can. We also encourage you, if you haven't, to visit the David Wills House, operated by the National Park Service, down on the square where President Lincoln put the finishing touches on this Gettysburg Address, the speech that transformed Gettysburg from a place of death and this devastation to the symbol of our nation's new birth of freedom. Now, before we uh, close the program this evening, we'd like to invite any active duty military uh, retirees, veterans, reservists, or guardsmen to please come forward, stand with Ranger Carlton, uh, Damon, and myself, so you can be recognized and we can, folks can get some pictures. Let us know if you like this video by hitting that thumbs up. Also, if you'd like to see more videos from us in the future, support our channel by hitting that subscribe button and dinging that bell so you get notified the next time there's a video from Panic D Video. Thanks for watching. Happy hunting. <laughs>